Oh, okay. 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 So, uh, Edgar Distra, okay, famous computer scientist, okay, in 1984, he said, now he said, a question of whether a computer can think is no more interesting than the question of whether a submarine can swim, right? And that, he said this because at that time, there was a lot of, uh, you know, confusion about whether this computer will can, it, it can better make anything that res resembles a human mind and whether it can take over the human mind, right? And to him, he answered this way, he said, uh, the question, this a computer, whether can think or not, is not more interesting than the question whether a submarine can swim. Right? So, two rough, slightly contradictory approaches okay, to chess, a game of chess. Which, and in this case, the chess game we're talking about is Go. Okay? Deep Minds Alpha Go beat a uh, Korean champion, Lee Sedo in uh, two years back, 9 to, f 9 to 15 of March. Okay? Now, uh, this was very shocking to a lot of people, even the experts. Because the experts, uh, they did not think the game could be beaten in 2016. Maybe 2026. Because uh, looking, at the, looking at the trend of computers getting faster and faster. Lah. But the, because, and they always thought Go was a grand challenge problem because Go, uh, in a Go on 19 by 19 board, uh, you can place a seat anywhere. So the branching factor at each point, uh, each decision point, each game, each point position, you can, the gate branching factor is very, very high. So, it's because of this so high, people did not think, you know, AI could uh, have a solution to that. Okay, so actually what was innovating for, about AlphaGo was they used two neural networks to determine something called value and policy. And it's trained automatically by something, uh, an algorithm uh, that plays the Monte Carlo tree search. Okay, so uh, so in other words, uh, AlphaGo is actually quite similar to a program that you can write in 1960s, okay, to play chess. It's quite similar, except that it you use neural net to boost, to calculate this thing and value and policy. And despite this thing, the so the structure of the game uh, remains the same. What is the structure? We are playing two-person games, that means games between two persons, zero-sum. Zero-sum means what? One person lose, the other person will win. Okay, so you can assign a value, okay, I'll talk more about this, uh, to every game position to say whether it's favorable to one person or the other, all right? And it's an adversarial game. So in other words, the two players are fighting each other, okay? It's not a cooperative game, right? They are cooperative games. For example, if I were to, you know, we all go and plant trees, right? Uh, I put my, put my effort into planting trees, you put your effort into planting trees, you can help each other. That's not an adversarial game. Okay? And the last point is that it's a per game of perfect information. In words, you look at the board game, you know everything about the board just by inspecting them. You know everything about the game just by exporting, inspecting the game. You have, there's nothing, no information is hidden from any other play, any player, even from the bystanders. Okay? If you just look at it, you, you know exactly what Lee Sedo knows about the game. Okay? So, uh, what is a glorified success? Chess playing computer, okay? In the classical chess, picker, chess playing computer in the 1960s, you don't need the neural network, right? What did they use? They used an algorithm, a classical algorithm uh, called alpha, beta, tree search algorithm to find the best move. And nowadays, how uh, we can teach this to undergraduates, okay? Uh, relies, it basically does this, okay? It relies on a heuristic function. Right? You have to write this function called f as a position, as a function of the board, board position and all the seats and where, where they are. And you will program this, write, write a heuristic function that says how good this is, this board it is, to one person or the other. And so let's examine how this is done. I will not write chess, okay? As if you can, if you, those of you who have examined my, uh, uh, the open source game that I put up there on the, my GitHub page, uh, I wrote a program called Connect4, okay? You might say, hey, you talk about chess, but now I play Connect4. Now I want to show you that it's the same thing, okay? Essentially the same thing, okay? Why Connect4? 
because it's a very old game with ancient roots, but modernized, okay, uh, by this company called Milton Bradley. So please, uh, Milton, anybody from Milton Bradley, don't sue me. Uh. I just use this for education, okay? I'm not trying to make benefit, uh, make any profit like, from that, okay? So what do they do? Okay, it's very simple. It's a board, vertical board, okay? You put seats upon, on the columns, and then the column drop in, okay? And to, uh, the either red or blue counters, okay? The board it drops in, and then when you form a blue line of four, okay, the blue, uh, if the red, if the red player finds a line of four, the red player will win. If the blue player finds a line of four, the blue, uh, uh, the red will win. No, the blue will win. Okay, so it is a player zero sum game with perfect information. Okay? It is easy to program. Okay, I, when I when I say I want to talk, when I ask myself, I want to give a talk to FOSS. What can I do? Ah? Okay, three hours, I came up with the game already. Okay, it's not hard. That's the, re one re that's the real reason I chose this game. Okay, and of course, uh, the debugging and UI is a little bit more complicated. Lah. Okay, because I'm not that good at that, that part. Okay, so let's do a simple demonstration of how the game is played. Let's look at, uh, this is what you will go if you go to my website. Okay, you will see this, right? Uh, the ball is a bit small, so sorry. Uh, I programmed this, so instead of playing against the computer now, okay, I will just do it manually, okay, show you how it's played. For example, the first player might start, he starts with red, right? So he will, might drop in this column. Ah, see, you imagine the counter dropping down all the way to the bottom. All the black one is empty. Then the second one, he'll drop here, let's say, okay? And then from the on the third move, the red will say, "Oh, okay, maybe I want to block him. Don't don't, don't prevent him from going up, right?" Then blue might say, "Oh, I'm going to block you from this side, okay?" And then red will say, "Okay, you're going to try block me, right? Never mind. I will maybe I will do this side, okay?" And then blue say, "Okay, never mind. I'll try to extend, right?" And red will continue and say, "Okay, you try to extend. Never mind. I'll block you, okay?" And you can go on and on, okay? So, but whatever happens is, whatever happens, uh, once one player makes, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, huh? Yeah, once one player makes a line of four, you win, okay? Now, of course, uh, in the this is a claim for kids, okay? Okay, but it has embodies all the three principles as chess, okay? Okay, so let's go on. Uh, then the next thing is I want to show you basically my website, which is where I put this game here. Uh, as you can see, uh, let's look at the code. Okay. Basically, quite, quite a simple thing. Everything is in one file called Connect4. It's a Py I wrote it in Python, right? Python, you can do things very, very fast. You can write code, okay? It's very easy on the programmer, okay? You write C or you write, uh, you can be reported to C uh, easily, okay? And then I use Brighton as the, as the glue uh, to make you, uh, so you can appear on the web, okay? So just now, the small little group graphics, I use Brighton, okay? Which is Python to replace JavaScript, okay? Quite interesting, quite an interesting uh, way of uh, architecting this, okay? So this, the whole website is down here, okay? If you look at the code, what does it look like? Well, yeah, okay, starting. See, you identify the empty blue, red, blue lines, the values one, two, three, okay? And then there's a uh, board, okay? I define a board. Starts a new board, okay. The board will have a width and a height, okay. Empty, it will get re reset, it will reset the board to zero, okay. So once the, the game starts, once the game starts, you initialize the lines, you set all the, points, all the points to zero, okay. It's a two direction, uh, two, 2D two board, right. So this one makes a copy. Make it larger, uh, Make it larger. How, how can I do that? Uh, yes, hold on. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So here. Okay. And then uh, the only thing interest. This is quite boring, lah. But the only thing interesting is I have the interesting data structure, ah, uh, which is I. I had, in, in, in addition to the normal board position, I invent something called the lines. So the lines would be out of the 7x7 board, uh, there are actually 88 lines okay, that you can form. Possible 4 lines. Okay? Um, uh, 88 possible lines of 4 that you can put. Okay? And so basically what I do is, every time you put in one counter, that will decrease uh, the number of lines that you can form. And those lines can be indexed by, uh, by, the, their, by their position. So this is the only interesting thing that I do. Makes, this makes the thing, calculation, calculation of the thing much more faster. Okay? And you can see, uh, uh, if, you can want, if you want to convert this to C, uh, you just you know, optimize that part of the computation. Okay, so this is quite boring. Uh, so go show the code, show the plot, show lines. It's all open source, so you can go, go up there and take a look. Okay? Yeah. See lines. So this will march through all the lines and count how many they are. I used a uh, Python uh, con this thing called a uh, uh, statement called U, which will, will return the things all there. Okay. So this will go and generate all the lines, all the 80, 88 tuples of the board. Okay. So see, generate all of them. You go down there and count. If the line is uh, if there are two if there are two different colors of in one line, then that line is removed from consideration. Of any other computation okay of the value so increment the line so if you increment you see you just go in and increment it by one so when you drop one at one position x it will go in and you know put locate the position and then later you count the number of lines okay and drop means remove that thing so from this in this um, manner we can do and then the most important thing is this line eval Okay, line eval, which basically returns the tuple. Okay, the line tuple, if it not exist, okay, it's zero. If it opposite exists, if the tuple is zero, but then it's not, but it's uh, okay. Yeah, never mind. Uh. So basically, it just evaluates the line, okay, right, to, to the current player. So winning says, is there a winning player in this position? Yes. Uh, if all the, you scan through all the lines, if one, if one of the lines is, uh, you can form a line that's greater than line 4 for one player, okay, yes, then the wing color is red. And, but if it's, life, it's a line length of uh, negative, and the wing play, the winning color is blue, right? So that's the evaluation, and this is the evaluation part. So it actually just, you know, evaluates the position of the board, okay? The, 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 this is quite boring code. This is the part that's quite standard for all play, two-player adversarial games. Search for the best move. Okay, so you start, you have a depth, you commit yourself to saying, let's say I search, oh, uh, let's say I go to depth for five. Okay, then there's the alpha and the beta, which basically converges, you know. So alpha is the highest, highest value you can find, beta is the uh, lowest value you can find. Okay, so you generate all the moves possible. Okay, for each possible column, you do, you drop the, you drop the bot in, and then, uh, Compute the score, okay? Then, after you compute the score, you remember when you compute the score, you recursively go descend into a game tree, right? So you go to the next game tree, depth reduced by one, the best, the best value becomes alpha and beta, right? Like that, okay? So this is the maximizing alpha beta search, and then this is the minimizing, minimizing uh, alpha beta search. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about what, what this means, okay? So the code is quite, uh, this, this, I think this is the most interesting part of the game, okay? Uh, that's all, okay? So I cannot go, uh, because of the limitation of time, uh, I cannot go into uh, great detail about it, but I will sh if, you, if you are interested, I can talk to you later, okay? Let's uh, go back to, go back to, Okay, so let me examine the code. 
So uh, basically, the most important part is the evaluation function. It's called at the search horizon or when there is a win occurring. Okay, it calculates how good a position is for the current player. And so this win position for this game, uh, Connect 4, is very easy. Okay, just as add up all the possible lines can be made, weighted by the length of lines. So if you make a move that forms a lot of lines, well, then it's a good move, basically. Okay, and if you make a move that doesn't make, break, make, you know, doesn't make a lot of lines, then of course it's a bad move. Okay, so this is the reason why I choose this thing. Simple, sim choose this game. Simple heuristics to illustrate the point. Okay. Uh, okay. So what can we learn? See, two player zero sum game. This means, uh, what does this mean? Uh? This means is your loss for one player, your loss is my gain. A single number, all I need is a single number to represent the value of the position to the current player. When I go down the tree and I look at the same position, okay, this value would swap. It becomes a negative value. Right? So positive means advantages to me, negative means disadvantages okay, to the current player. Lah. By me, I mean current player. And this, so this single number, when you go down the tree from the red, okay, from red to blue, you will change sign. Okay, and, and when we hit the horizon, that's where you do the evaluation. Okay? Right? So, let's sit back and reflect. And what, what, what does this do? So, the main loop runs the alpha beta search, recursively going down the search horizon. At search horizon, we will evaluate the advantage to the, to the current player. We can do this, okay, like I said, okay, by counting the number of lines formed and weighing each right, by the function of length. Simple function of length. Like I said, I did it very simply. I just count the number of lines. And the number of playing of the moves depends on this drop and undrop function. Okay? Drop means drop one counter at a certain position. Undrop means take that reverse, reverse that counter back. Okay? And then once we reach the search horizon, we calculate the value and then we'll propagate the values back up the tree to determine, to determine the best move. Okay? So what have we learned? Is we have learned something called the minimax principle. What does this mean? Okay, I, I uh, want not to be confused. Uh, uh, John von Neumann he proved uh, something called the minimax theorem. It's a related theorem. Okay, for playing such games. Okay, uh, but for for mixed strategies. Okay, that's called the theorem. But I, for me, I will call this thing called a larger thing because humans can do it. Uh, uh, principle minimax principle. It means that there is always a best move. And best uh, means uh, it maximizes the score for the playing color and it minimizes the best score for the opponent in his next move. So this is a recursive definition. Okay, so this means uh, if when we consider how good a move, uh, we must look ahead. We place ourselves in the opponent's shoe and we and then they make and make their best move. And we choose a move now that makes the next best move as small as possible. Understand? So this is how we do it. This is how the computer do it. If you are going to play a game like that, I don't think you can escape from this thing. Minimax principle. Okay? Not the minimax theorem, uh, which is another which is quite a deep theorem. Uh, okay. Proved by John McConnell. Not the same. Okay. But why I use the minimax? Because you yeah, minimum pick, pick, do the minimum of your opponent's maximum. Okay? Game theory. Solving a game. Since there is always a best move. You can solve the game. Okay? So in game theory, what you can do, you can determine which player can win the game. Will the first play no the question will be, can the first player win? If the first player cannot win, can, can the second player win? Okay? So determine which player can win, how you can play, and if you know there is such a thing, you can solve this game already, then there's no need to play. Because when we say let's play Connect 4 and then who start? Oh, you start. Uh, oh, okay, you have a strategy, you can win. And that's it. Okay? There's no need to play. The soft conclusion for Connect 4 is the first player will win. Yeah? Really true. Because why? Uh, this game is so simple that, you know, uh, computers have already crashed through all the positions already. Okay? You might think you're playing against somebody, you know, you haven't met, you haven't went through all the positions yet. No! Uh, the computer has already re-evaluated it and you know, it exists somewhere in platonic space where you get, say, when you reach this position, you know, uh, first player will win. So the first player has a, it can force a win 
on or before the 41st move, okay? Or the 41st ply. Uh, ply is half a move. That means one move and then one player move and then the other guy move. By starting in the middle column, you put in the first player, how he, what he can do to win, he put in the middle column, then he win. Okay? If he play perfectly, that means he pick the best move all the time. And the game is a theoretical draw. Only when the first player refuses to put in in the column, uh, in the center, he put one off off center. Okay, and this is a very interesting result. Huh? There are other soft games. For example, tic tac toe. You play a tic tac game of tic tac toe. No need to play because why? We know exactly how to win tic tac toe. And uh, in the 1950s and 60s, they solved the game of checkers. So don't play checkers. And connect four was also soft. Okay. So what was interesting is the game of international chess and go, okay? Because those games are big. Okay, so let me illustrate the minimax principle by going through these three just to show you what you do. Suppose you are red and you have red to move. You have this position. You have this alternative position go moves to make. You move. Once you make a move, you go to blue. Blue starts to make, right? Then from this position, you can move. He, can, he has four, four possible positions, goes to red. And from this position, also four and also four. This is just for illustration. So what happens when you do minimax? Very simple. You go, resend the tree all the way down. Okay, let's say you descend all the way down to here. Now, of course, the, number, the, the thing, evaluator return will give you a number. But instead of saying a number, I'll just illustrate it by saying whether it's a good move or bad move. So good move means good to red. Let's say we produce a whole string of good moves. These are all good moves. Then what happens is when you propagate up the tree, this becomes a bad move for blue. So this move becomes a bad move for blue. Okay, this, this tree. Then let's say you go down this alternative. Let's say this move gives you a good move for red. It's a win for red, good move for red, and bad move for red. Okay, when you go back, when you go back to this position and consider it from the point of view of blue, okay, is this a good or bad position? It is a bad position, black, okay, lose. Why? Because possibly uh, one move here, uh, just from this move, I can make, I can uh, make red win. I don't want that. Consider a bad move, okay? And for example, and if you go down another tree, like there's one good move and three other black moves, okay? Then when you propagate up, okay, this to blue uh, is a good move, right? Then when you propagate from here back again, okay, you can see that uh, good, bad, and a losing move, okay? What would you rather have? You would rather have one that is win. Red would choose the one that wins, okay? So red will play this move. But... Having said that, once you reach this point, huh, then what happens? Blue is not going to make himself lose, right? Because he's, going to, he's not going to play this move. So he will choose one that's bad for red. Uh, so that tree, so the descending, when, when the game is played, it actually reaches this position. Understand? So from this, huh, you can learn how do bad players play chess. Okay? Or any other play. Two player zero sum game. First of all, they do not. When you are normal human, uh, you have cognitive bias. First cognitive bias is you do not think that's the best move. You think somehow you know we by aggression or you think like you're Donald Trump or uh, you can everything can be negotiated uh, huh? right? That's not true. No, that is always the best move. Okay, and so by the mini max principle, this is wrong. Okay, that is the best move, and people don't they do not consider the mini max principle. What do they do? Say they. When they move, make a move, they will say, hey, uh, I hope the opponent will make him a bad move. No, you must always assume the more computer, the computer, or no, the opponent is going to make the best move that he can. Okay? And you must make a choice so that his best move is as more as possible. Okay? And of course, this is, this is the most other very important thing that you know. We do not consider all the alternatives. The computer, because it's a machine, it can generate all the possible moves, okay, right? And they do not think far ahead. How does a computer play chess or any other two players do some game? It knows that there is a best move and it starts to find it. So it considers the minimax principle, makes the best move it can. 
prevent the opponent from making good moves. It does not hope that the opponent will make bad moves. Okay? So, but if there is, uh, if the opponent takes, takes, takes a bad move, they will capitalize on it. Okay? And it considers many viable alternatives. Far more than a human because of a limited memory, you know, uh, we can we will not be able to go as far as what and he thinks he can think literally very very far ahead. But of course, limited by computational power, that is the reason why we think we thought you know go cannot be conquered. That's actually not true. Okay, it can be with neural nets. So what is the takeaway? Uh, go try techniques. Okay, logic, discrete math. Okay, we already know this. Two-person adversarial games must be played according to this minimax principle. The algorithm to do this is the alpha beta, which proves the search tree. Okay, uh, good old-fashioned AI has conquered this a long time ago. So what may happen? What happened in this deep theory, uh, deep learning theory uh, 2016 was that uh, neural nets were used to speed up the evaluation. Okay, so my answer is don't throw out classical AI just because deep learning is hot. Okay, the structure of the game, huh? say, and all, a theorem like the minimax principle, okay, minimax theorem continues to hold. And the last point is don't play soft games. Lah. Unless you are playing it for fun, to make a child happy, to make friends. Okay, don't play soft games. Soft games like uh, actually Connect 4, I put it up there actually. Yeah, please don't play it. Lah. I mean, it's very stupid. Lah. Okay, put it that way. Okay, because the number of lim choices are limited. But go and play Go. If you can master it, worth Go is worth, still worth mastering. Okay? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, yes, that's it. That's the end of the point. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, my code is up there. If you want to talk to me about it, you know, I'll be happy to explain to you why I made certain choices. Of course, it's not the best code. I did this in three hours. Okay, 